security, if I understood you correctly, you would actually favor um, essentially the system that we have now, but maybe tweak so that it's not going to go through the roof? Or do you not favor individual accounts? Or? Completely. I absolutely favor individual accounts. That should be one of those options. But if we go to a fair tax, it is it is a system that can remain in place and be solvent. Uh, and I don't think Social Security was ever meant to be the end all. I think that it was meant to be a help uh, for individuals in old age. And um, I, I think that it's a problem that is that is pale in comparison to Medicare, for example. I mean, Medicare is really um, the program that's got us buried, and Medicaid both. Yes, national sales tax. Okay. Uh, in the case of items being resold on the secondary market, for instance, home, houses, yes. real estate, and automobiles, uh, would that still apply? No. It's uh, to new, uh, new goods. Uh, and there would be no business-to-business uh, -business, um, taxes. So using building a home as an example, the builder of the home would not pay a value-added tax for everything used in the construction of the home. That would be tax-exempt purchases from um, Home Depot that at the point of sale new would apply uh, to that home. It's also one of the, one of the, uh, the criticisms or, or questions regarding the fair taxes, isn't it regressive? The poor are going to end up paying more fair tax relative to their incomes. What the fair tax does is it issues everyone in the country a $200 a month prebate check. So each one of us get $2,400 a year from the government that enables, it's kind of an unavoidable uh, amount of fair tax that all of us are going to have to pay for food, clothing, shelter, energy, uh, up to the point of the poverty level. So $2,400 basically enables all of us to pay the fair tax up to the point of the poverty level. Let me use, let me, let me get back to uh, also the notion that the fair tax would be cost neutral over a very short amount of time. Currently a can of Coke that sells for a dollar has 23% tax embedded in it. I mean that's social security match, that's taxes that the business pick that Coca-Cola pays. Well, you enact the fair tax. And, you know, we live in, we live in a competitive world. So Coca-Cola is not going to have to sell their Coke for a dollar anymore to make the same profit. They're going to be able to sell it for 80 cents and have it subject to a 23% tax so that the Coke ends up still costing a dollar. I mean, and, and that I think will happen over a very short amount of time. And what does that do to American goods and services export? It makes us 23% more competitive overnight. Goods and services that get imported into the United States would get subject to the fair tax, as would all of our goods and services. Yeah, as, as president, uh, how do you um, convince a stubborn Congress to repeal the Patriot Act? Well, so uh, as, as governor of New Mexico, and I said this time and time again when I ran for governor of New Mexico, I can't, I can't say that I can change uh, the legislature's um, output. Uh, I mean, I, I can't coerce them into passing this legislation. Don't discount the power of being chief executive and what effect that has when it comes to being able to appoint the heads of all the agencies, to be able to appoint the heads of all the boards and commissions when it comes to rules and regulations. When it comes to rules and regulations as governor of New Mexico, basically I controlled all of them. And they got better on a daily basis. So when it comes to implementation of the Patriot Act, don't discount how much better things could get overnight if TS. First of all, um, as President of the United States, I would have never established the Department of Homeland Security, ever. That, that, 
against the 750 vetoes that I rendered. If I would have been President of the United States, Homeland Security, veto. When it came to TSA, veto. Let's leave uh, airport security to the, uh, to the airlines uh, and to the airports. And I dare say today that airline security would be, airport security would be as safe and less intrusive. And we did, the most significant thing after 9-11 was we beefed up the cockpit doors, arguably preventing an aircraft from ever being used as a missile again. And even more important, you and I as passengers, we don't sit by and watch bad behavior go down on the airline anymore. We don't. The underwear bomber was underneath a pile of people um, as a result of, of what he did. So, uh, don't, I, I repeat, you know, making the Patriot Act better, there are a lot of rules and regulations that go along with the Patriot Act that if they don't change it legislatively at all, Rules and regulations. They're also through. using it to um, enforce drug. Um... Exactly. In the name of a drug-free America, we're getting our doors kicked down, and now, in the name of a terrorist-free America, the same same phenomenon. Our civil liberties are going out the window on a on a daily basis. And the newest proposal, um, newest piece of legislation that we that the military can now detain U.S. citizens. Wow, that's, it's just getting so much worse, so much worse, not better. Um, it, it kind of as a follow-up to his question about dealing with Congress, given the way that they conduct business, would you think it's fair to say that they are a racketeering-influenced, corrupt organization? Yes, yes. In Act of Fair Tax, I think um, maybe half the lobbyists in Washington go away. I share an outrage of, uh, over that Occupy Wall Street has. This country doles it out unfairly, and it's politicians with their hand out to grant special favors, to grant loopholes to uh, groups, individuals, business, corporations that are willing to pay for it, and they're more than happy to take those contributions so they can get reelected to, you know, to make sure that business stays as usual. What are your thoughts on our uh, relationship with Cuba? And the, um, if you were president, what would be your position regarding the embargo? I just, I, I have to think that we should work in favor of, of um, trade. That, that trade is really, that when we, when we trade goods with foreign countries, uh, that's, that's the best diplomacy, in my opinion. So, Florida, I, I don't want to, I don't want to misstate where we've gotten, or excuse me, Cuba. I don't want to misstate how we've gotten to this point, but it seems like moving forward that we should be looking at inroads that bringing an end to communism is exposing people to uh, the alternative to that. And we would have that opportunity with Cuba. Thank you. I got a question about the Second Amendment. Uh, lately I've been hearing a lot of people talk about the Tenth Amendment gives uh, the states the rights to decide uh, whether or not you can carry a firearm. And uh, I, I personally believe the 14th Amendment's original intent was to uh, make that universal. What, what, are your, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, I can't go to Washington carrying my concealed weapon, New York City, where I'm originally from, Chicago. What are your thoughts on that? I, I don't know how an amendment to the Constitution be, could be clearer than the Second Amendment. So, speaking from my own experience in New Mexico, when I was running for governor of New Mexico in 1994, a real cutting issue at that time was concealed carry. Um, I thought that allowing concealed carry would result in less gun violence um, and uh, was able to actually sign that legislation as governor of New Mexico. I'm not the, I, think, I don't think the Second Amendment could be clearer. I think that it was uh, that it was brought about to, to um, protect us from uh, an over, overreaching government. And I still, um, I still think that that applies. So I'm not the guy to uh, legislate restricting, restricting the number of bullets in a clip. Whenever I, whenever I see that kind of situation, I always wish that there would have been somebody there that would have had that same gun with that same number of bullets or more bullets to to be able to bring an end to that. So, um, um, and we should, we should, I, I don't think the 
Constitution could be clearer. We, we should be able to carry guns wherever it is that we travel in this country. That's, that's my opinion. 